Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Kevin. I'm a DP out of the LA Orange County area. And today we're taking a look at this guy, the new Aperture 600D Pro. A Little bit of a long video today, guys. So here's a table of contents. We're gonna first start off with a real world review where I kind of break down a couple scenes that I did using the 600D. Um, and then after that, we're gonna do an output comparison between the 120D Mark II, the 300D Mark II, and the 600D Pro. Kind of in an interview scenario with a window in the background, you'll, you'll be able to see it. And then lastly, we're gonna do a first impressions review where I just kind of talk about how I feel about using the light for the first time. And that's it. Let's party. Today I'm not really talking about specs or numbers or you know light candles, foot lumens, or I got those backwards, those are backwards. I'm gonna more so kind of talk about the practical ways or at least one of the practical ways that I, uh, I'm gonna be using these. So one of the main reasons I wanted to get this light was so that I could shoot through windows for daytime interior shots. Now as much as I love our home, we don't really get a ton of natural sunlight throughout the day. So I thought this would be a perfect place and a perfect opportunity for me to kind of test and practice and try to recreate some of that artificial sunlight. So before we even jump in, I have to thank my lovely Sugarfoot smoke show of a babe, fiance Jill. She hates being in front of camera. This is her worst nightmare and I forced her. So thank you so much, honey. Love you. Love you, honey. Anyway, yeah, I called her Sugarfoot. Yeah, Twinkle Toes, I call her, she's my honey bunches of babe. She's my, she's my cinnamon toast, yum yum. Okay, let's jump into our first scene. This one was in our bedroom. We kind of went for a morning look. This room typically doesn't get any light throughout the day. So it was really cool to kind of recreate the sunlight coming through. And so what we did is we placed a single 600D right outside the door, um, right on our patio. I had the light at 100% brightness and we shot it directly through. I used the curtains to kind of cut the light to keep it a little bit more contrasty and moody. Um, I didn't want to kind of flood the whole room with light. I wanted a little bit more dark. And that diffusion that is actually a, a bed sheet from Target, um, that it's not actually doing any, any diffusion. It's mostly just covering up some of the patio furniture that you could see in the frame. I thought it was a little bit distracting. So that kind of helped cover that up and gave it like a, a neutral kind of look. Lastly, I added haze and haze makes everything look great. I think one of the things that I would have changed is it's a little too moody. It's a little, you know, I want it to be realistic. And if I were to change anything, I probably would have brought in maybe a bounce on um, her right side to kind of lift up those shadows a little bit because it's a little too dark. I still think it works, but I think that it could, it could be lifted a little bit in terms of exposure, um, either with a bounce or another soft light. Not too much, very subtle. Um, but I still think it works. I, st I still think it looks great. Um, can it be sold for a morning shot? Sure, I think so. I think it could be sold for a morning shot. I don't know, you let me know. Um, but anyway, I really love how this turned out. I think the 600D did a really great job of um, just being bright enough and shooting through those windows um, and really looking like, uh, you know, sunlight. So by the time we got to the dining room setup, um, it was completely dark outside and I thought, this is the perfect opportunity, you know, for me to really see if these lights can can sell for a daytime shot. Um, are they bright enough? Can they match up with a, a J8 or a M18? Can they do, you know, what I'm asking them to do and what I've been waiting for them to do and what I was hoping that the 300D would do? Um, can they do it? And so, short answer, yes. So let, let's jump in. So this time I took two 600Ds and shot them through the double doors to the patio. Luckily, these rooms are kind of connected so I didn't really have to move the lights much from the first scene. So I just had to reposition the, the first light and then add the second light in um, just to add more exposure. The room was a little bit bigger um, and just give a little bit more lift in the room. I angled both of these so that they'd be out of the main wide frame um, and so that they would kind of cast a shadow on that left wall. I then shut the blinds kind of halfway so I could still let that light 
shoot in, but, but not be able to see the fact that it was nighttime outside and to really, again, sell that shot. Um, and then again, of course, I added haze um, just to give it a bit of atmosphere. So for being nighttime, I think I definitely think this works. You know, it looks like it's daytime and it looks like it's early morning. Um, and, you know, she's having a coffee with our little puppers, Billy. I don't know. You let me know what you think. To me, I think I was I was able to sell this shot. This is believable. So this last test, I was seeing how the light output of the Aperture 120D Mark II, 300D Mark II and 600D Pro all competed with each other with direct sunlight in kind of an interview scenario, a situation where most people in video will find themselves in. And if you haven't, you will soon. And you're gonna to wanna to shoot, for some reason, you're gonna to wanna to open up and enhance the, the image just by showing a frame, uh, a window frame in the back. Um, but you'll quickly find out that, that is, it's bright outside. Unless it's shaded out there and you're, there's direct sunlight, if you're in California like us, where there's always sun, it's gonna be bright. And so a lot of people want to add that depth and enhance the image and show that window in the frame. But the problem is usually that most prosumer lights, they're not, they're not powerful enough to balance the subject from what they're seeing outside and, and balance those two ex, uh, exposures. Um, you either expose for the subject and you blow out the window or you expose for the window and your subject is now completely dark. And that's due to the lights, they're just not as bright, at least unless you get a big HMI or you cover the entire window with ND. But not everyone has access to like those big lights and they're kind of a pain in the butt to use. Um, I don't, there was, there's not been one time where I used like an M18 and I didn't break a circuit. Like it, it's, it's kind of a hassle to use those lights. They run hot, they're bright as all heck, but they're not they're not easy to use and you kind of need a crew to run them um, and that and so this was something that i was hoping that the 300d mark ii would solve um, and it got close but you know i still found that my windows were always being blown out um, so without further ado let's look at this let's look at this test of an interview scenario where you know again it's not pretty but um, it's just meant to test the output um, for sake of continuity, um, I used the light dome on each light. Um, I exposed each image to middle gray and each were shot midday within a 30 minute time frame, um, just to avoid any light changes outside. Uh, lights and camera positions, everything was positioned in the exact same uh, places across all three tests. Let's jump in. The first one is the 120D Mark II. You can easily see how much we're clipping outside. This is usually what happens when you're shooting an interview and you're not sure what light output you have and you're like, "Oh yeah, I'm going to shoot I'm going to shoot with a big window. There's a nice, you know, big head to toe window. I'm going to shoot it's going to look beautiful." And then they turn their 120D on and they're like, "Oh crap, this looks terrible because it's completely blown out." Um this is a point where you should probably switch, you know, your whole scene. Pan your camera, look to a different, um, more balanced exposure um, kind of image so that you're not blowing stuff out. You want to kind of keep everything balanced, uh, essentially. And this is kind of what people refer to as the camera's dynamic range. The, the camera can only see so much in both the shadows and the highlights. They're not nearly as strong as like the human eye, where if I look out the window, I can see the darkness on my desk. Well, it's not dark right now because I got a freaking sun behind me, but I can see dark shadows and I can look and see like the trees and it's completely balanced. Our eyes are significantly more stronger than the cameras. Um, and so with that being said, you, you want to have a light that's strong enough to balance the two levels or you don't want to, you want to look for more balanced, you know, a, a more balanced scene. Okay, so for the 300D, we are seeing better results, but we're still clipping outside. Still something where I'd say, okay, that's a, in my eyes, that's, that's a mistake. It's, it's not, it doesn't look good. Um, this is kind of the video look. This is why people say, oh, your video looks, 
the the film looked had a video characteristic to it and it, and that's like you don't want to hear that you want to say oh this looks like film this looks organic this is still something i'd probably avoid shooting something that i would say is not usable in in my eyes some people would would say differently but i would avoid shooting it um, i'd choose something a little bit more balanced okay now for the 600d pro now this this is a lot better i'd say this is definitely more usable um, the power of the 600D is definitely helping to balance the two exposures. If we take a look at the waveform, we are clipping on the roof, but for the most part, this is how my eyes see it. And in my opinion, it's totally usable. So this is like what's so exciting, right? Like we finally have a light that can compete with like broad daylight that can give you acceptable results if you're shooting out of a window or shooting into a window for a daytime interior like this, I, you can sell these shots and, and they're awesome. That's why exactly why I got two of them. And it's something that I'm so stoked for and completely worth it in my opinion. I'd say the only downside to this light is, is being too bright in, in this scenario, the interview scenario. I found that like when I had each light at 100%, the only light that gave me the subject problems was the 600D, it was just too bright and I found myself squinting a lot. So. You'll have to position the light somewhere else. So, some subjects are high profile or some are just kind of a little snobby and just like it's too bright and or, or it just they, they don't say anything and they're like this the whole time. And it's just like, OK, that, that's an issue. That's an issue. It's too bright. It's a good issue, but it's an issue. First off, I think it's an amazing light, as you can tell already. Um, I thought the 300D, too, was already an, an amazing light, but with even more output. Um, this LED like technology is insane and it's just so much more useful to me. Um, it's Bowen's mounts. It means I can use a ton of modifiers and I can just slap them on there. I have a big six inch octobank that I could just attach directly to it. Um, w instead of setting up like a big book light with a bunch of stands and a frame, this is like quick, fast, um, as opposed to the HMIs or like the big, the bigger lights. Um, I love that the ballast acts like a sandbag. It's so damn heavy. This thing, it's like a freaking, it's heavy, but in a good way, you can use it as a sandbag. Like I didn't sandbag, I didn't sandbag some of my stands. Shh, don't tell nobody, but, um, but it was just, it's so heavy. It was like, it wasn't, I didn't need one. The other thing was, I love that I can charge my V mounts on the ballast. I had them charging while I was setting up the scenes and trading them out, but I do think, I'm not sure yet, I didn't do a test, but I, when the light is on, I think that it charges it a lot slower, um, if not at all. I don't, I, I don't really know, but, so that just means like when I'm on a break on a shoot or something, or it's during a lunch break, or you know, whatever the case when there's downtime, if there is any downtime, turn the lights off, like save the lights so that your batteries can charge. I'm not sure of that yet. I'd love to get some more information. They, it might, and they might be charging more, maybe at a slower rate, but um, when I did have the light off, my batteries were charging and like it was so convenient because it's right there. Um, so that was awesome. Another thing with the ballast and charging V-mounts is um, it's cool because the ballast has a little monitor that displays the charging and, and what percentage your batteries are at. But what I noticed is with at least my core battery was as it was charging, my core battery would say something like it was charged at, it was charged up to 80% while the display had like a 40% difference saying it was only charged at, you know, what something significantly lower. I forget what the numbers were. Um, and so there was a discrepancy there and I'm not, I think I would imagine that the, the ballast was wrong and the battery was right. Um, but I think that might be a firmware issue. Um, I did also notice that it wouldn't charge it past 80%. Um, or maybe it was that it was just taking a lot longer once the battery got a lot more, you know, full of capacity. So those are a couple things that I'm going to look into more and hopefully update you guys on. Um, but it charges it when it's off for the most part. Uh, hopefully it's a firmware update. Another thing that was an issue in my eyes, literally and figuratively in my eyes, was when I initially plugged it in, uh, I, was, I pulled it out, unpacked, uh, you know, unboxed it. I plugged it in. 
I, I turned around to go, you know, turn it on. And as I was turning around to turn it on, it... Striking. Ooh. Ooh. Blasts to like 50%, I think. But 50% on this thing, like right now, it's at 25%. So like... Turning this on for the first time in my dark garage at night and just plug it, plug, plugging it in and just it blasting me and punching me right in the face was, it wasn't nice. That was mean. That was very mean. That is a pr if that was a prank, that was, that was mean. There was another auto power on issue where um, it wasn't connected to AC and I was just curious to see if um, a V-mount would power it on. I knew it would, but I was just kind of like, oh, I wonder if my V-mounts work. And the minute I, it was unplugged, um, and the minute I put the V-mount on, it powered on by itself. And I don't love that because, you know, on, on set, at least what I've learned is that you yell out striking before you turn on any light, especially bright lights, because you'll blind somebody. And that's kind of a warning to say, hey, I'm about to turn on a bright light, like cover your eyes. Um, this, no grace, no regard for any eyeball life. It's, that's very mean. Let's try it real quick. So, off. It's really dark. It's my computer screen right here. Let's um, let's unplug the main AC power V mount battery. Yeah, auto power is on. This time it auto powered on to where I had it before, which is about twenty five percent. But um, you know, at least it didn't blind me at fifty percent or even higher. But yeah, I'm not down with that. I think that should be a firmware update. I think that's something that's very important, um, especially on professional sets. It's called the 600D Pro. Um, and so if not, if it does do that, maybe it has a speaker built in that says, hey, I'm about to, I'm about to punch anyone's eyeball in the face right now because I'm turning it on whether you like it or not. I do like the attention to detail. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's these little straps that I think, I'm not a, a gaffer or a grip guy, but these little straps that kind of, like, I think that, that the header cable goes in there so that it's not dangling and, you know, that's nice. I really like that. That feels like, you know, the M18s that I rent and the big HMIs that I rent have all these good things on it. I love the port covers. Every port has a cover. Um, that's part of the kind of rain resistance feature that it, that it has. All the cables seem high quality. I don't know what they're called, but you, you kind of got to pull the sleeve back to eject it um, and disconnect it. Those seem more durable. The body itself, it looks metal, but it's like, it feels like a really high quality plastic. Definitely seems durable. Um, the, the ballast itself is, is metal. Seems like it's made out of like a really, really durable metal. The menu feels really intuitive, very easy to navigate and click around. Nothing too complicating there. Um, connected to my Citus link just fine. That was no problem. The entire package is pretty heavy. It's like with, when it's in its case, it's, it's, it's surprisingly heavy when, when you're like lugging it around, but it comes with that nice very nice case which has like wheels like luggage wheels and a little extended arm which i love uh, that's great they didn't have to do that but they did um same kind of quality i'd say as a 300d mark ii i love this light i can't wait to use it more um great job aperture you guys are killing it in the led game led is catching up to those hmis um, this one's equivalent to i believe a j8 i think it might be a little bit brighter after watching luke Sirveld's video on it which i would highly highly recommend meet the gaffer that guy is, he's, he's a legend, but amazing light. I think it's awesome. I love it. I, I that's why I got two of them. Um, and yeah, I'm so stoked on it. All right, guys, that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing, liking, and, um, if you know anybody who's looking for a bright light, please consider sharing this video, um, and showing them to your friends, your filmmaker friends, or anybody who's looking to, to invest in a really strong, really well-made light. Um, also, if you want to rent these lights, I've got two of them available here in Costa Mesa um, on ShareGrid. I'll leave my ShareGrid link down below in the description, so check that out. I have a ton of other gear too, so any of your production needs, hit me up. I got you. I got you. 
Um, and lastly, check out my Instagram. I got a bunch of cool stuff on IG where I'm posting BTS, um, rig pics, everything under the sun when it comes to filmmaking. I'm obsessed. I love this stuff and I appreciate you guys um, tuning in. Okay, Merry Christmas, guys. Have a great day. God is real. Bye, little stinkers. Mm -hmm.